Hi, my name is Ted Young, and my pandemic haircut is a hat. Getting up too big. Getting started with open telemetry. Okay. But what even is open telemetry? Come to think of it, what's telemetry? The Cambridge Dictionary defines telemetry as the science or process of collecting information about objects that are far away and sending the information somewhere electronically. Open telemetry is an observability platform, a set of well-factored components that can be used together or a la carte. Open telemetry collects up a variety of observations, distributed tracing, metrics, and system resources being the most important. Rather than treating these as separate signals, open telemetry braids them together and provides indexing and context that allows you to aggregate and cross-index all of these signals on the back end. In addition to the data collection, OpenTelemetry provides a data processing and pipelining facility that allows you to change data formats, manipulate your data, scrub it, etc., etc. All of the tools you need to build a robust telemetry pipeline in a modern system. Let's do a quick overview of the major software components that make up OpenTelemetry. Inside of every service in your deployment, Install the OpenTelemetry client. We refer to the client as the SDK. The SDK, in turn, has an API. Your application's frameworks and libraries use this instrumentation API to describe the work that they are doing. The SDK then exports the collected observations to a data pipelining service called the Collector. OpenTelemetry comes with its own data protocol, OTLP, but the collector can translate OTLP into a variety of formats, including Zipkin, Jaeger, and Prometheus. Notably, OpenTelemetry does not provide its own backend or analysis tool. This is because at the heart of OpenTelemetry is a standardization effort. The goal is to come up with a universal language for describing the operations of computers in a cloud environment. The goal is not to standardize how we analyze that data, because standardizing how you analyze things isn't really a thing. Instead, we hope that OpenTelemetry will help push the world of observability forwards by allowing new analysis tools to get started quickly without having to rebuild this entire ecosystem of telemetry software. Speaking of software ecosystems, how does OpenTelemetry keep track of all of this code? In order to ensure that different implementations remain consistent with each other and continue to interoperate, OpenTelemetry is designed via a specification. The specification is a language neutral document which describes everything you would need to build OpenTelemetry. Before we dive into the details, I do want to point out that it's very easy to install OpenTelemetry. At the time of this recording, I recommend four languages for a production ready beta Java, JavaScript, Python, and Go. In all four of these languages, there's an easy quick start guide that I've written over at opentelemetry.lightstep.com. We have easy installers. It's usually just a line or two of code, or in some cases, even a command line configuration to get everything installed and going. Okay, let's just show how easy it is to get started by trying it in Java. So I've got my pet clinic app here. This is just a Java sample application, and I'm going to just boot it up so you can see what it looks like. So Java jar pointing at the target. There we go. So that starts the application up. It's Java, so it might take a bit. There we go. Looks like we're off to the races. If I go here and take a look, there it is. There's Pet Clinic look around. Very nice. Okay. Kill that app. Now I've already downloaded um, the OpenTelemetry Java agent. It's wrapped in a, a little launcher that makes it easier to work with LightStep, but it's basically just the Java agent. And so if we just attach that to our prior command,
then we should see the application boot up but start running open telemetry and we can see some open telemetry messages flying by so we know it's been installed it's a little bit noisy because it's still in beta and now that we've started up have a look the app's still working find some owners, run some errors, make some more errors happen, add some people. Cool. And oh, this exception you can see because I actually triggered an exception here. Uh, this will trigger an exception in the app. And since all of this is hooked up into my account in Lightstep, if I go here in Lightstep and go have a look at our Explore page, boom, I can see all of this stuff coming in from our example Pet Clinic app. Okay, so that's the basics. That's how you do it in Java. So in this talk, we're going to cover open telemetry basics, starting with what it is we're actually trying to observe the fundamentals of how open telemetry approaches observation and the basics of getting all of this stuff set up and deployed in your actual system. Okay, so let's look at a quick example so we understand the kind of transactions we're talking about here. So imagine you have a mobile client that wants to upload a photo and a caption. Okay, so this client uh, will make a request to a server quote unquote, but that server of course will be a lot of servers. Uh, there'll be a reverse proxy sitting in front of the app uh, that will shunt the request off to an authentication server and then take the photo and upload it to scratch disk. And once all that's done, then it sends the request on to your application. The application then uploads the file after treating it or whatever it's supposed to do to cloud storage, so S3 or some equivalent thing like that. We then store the URL to the image along with the caption and user data and anything else important in our data service. That data service is another web application which then sits in front of a Redis cache and a SQL storage device of some kind. Why is it built like that? Who knows? Someone said, build it this way, and someone else said, okay, this is our app. But Look at this thing. This is the most basic app ever. I feel like I've been looking at LAMP stacks and other things that more or less look like this application for at least 20 years. And these applications are almost as annoying to observe today as they were back then. So this view here is more of a service map approach to looking at this transaction. Let's change gears and look at this transaction from the perspective of a call graph. In this graphic, each line represents an operation. The length of the line represents how long that operation took, and we can see how these operations are connected to each other via network calls. Now, as an operator, there's a number of things we care about when we're observing our system. First of all, we care about latency. Why is it slow? is such a cranky question to answer. So when we look at our transactions, we want to know where the time went specifically, which subservice actually was spending the time, and where did we spend time waiting. Next, of course, is that we care about errors. We want to know which operation and which component and which service actually had the problem when our transaction is failing. Now, to root cause your latency and your errors, you're going to need some additional information. The first kind of information is fairly obvious. You need to look at events. These are called logs in other systems. We call them events. It's the same thing. What is the sequence of operations that were involved in this problem? or this success. Besides looking at latency errors and events within the context of a single transaction, we also want to compare them across transactions. 
Knowing that a critical error correlates highly with a particular host, a particular project ID, a particular route, is critical, critical information when you're trying to form a hypothesis and root cause your system. The real issue, of course, is scale. As your system grows and grows, the number of logs grow and grow, and the percentage of your logs that are relevant to any particular transaction or issue shrink and shrink. After your system reaches a certain size, it becomes impossible to paw through your logs by hand. The ability to contextualize and index all of these events is OpenTelemetry's killer feature. And how does OpenTelemetry achieve all this awesome indexing? That's right, context propagation. Context propagation is the core concept behind OpenTelemetry's architecture. If you can understand context propagation, then everything else going on in OpenTelemetry will fall into place. So, how does context propagation work? Imagine we have two servers and they're connected to each other via a network request. All of OpenTelemetry's indices and other transactional data is stored in an object called the context. This context object follows the flow of execution through the program. When a transaction moves from one service to the next via a network call, all of these key value pairs must come along as well. Sending along the contents of the context object as metadata on the network request is called propagation. On the client side, the contents of the context object are injected into the HTTP request as HTTP headers. Then on the server side, the same values are extracted from the HTTP headers and deserialized into a new context object, which then continues to follow the transaction through the new server. So what do these context propagation headers look like? There's a variety of them out there in the wild, but the two that OpenTelemetry is focused on are being created through the W3C tracing working groups. So these are official HTTP headers for distributed tracing and context propagation. The first header is called trace context. It has two header fields. The first one's trace parent, the second one's trace state. Trace parent contains several specific IDs that are important to tracing. First of all, it contains the trace ID. The trace ID is the transaction ID. This is the ID that's going to be stapled to every event and operation in your system. The next ID is the span ID. This ID represents the parent operation of your current operation. So every event occurs not only within a transaction, but also within an operation, and those operations have unique IDs. Uh, there's also a sampling flag to check whether sampling's been enabled. And then there's a second header called trace state, which honestly you don't really need to worry about. This header is just for internal details for tracing systems to share with each other. The real important part is that by standardizing uh, these headers through the W3C, we can get everyone to start agreeing on what headers we're actually using, what value types we're actually using, and this is going to be really important for something that depends on interoperation as much as distributed tracing does. Okay, so those are the tracing specific headers. But there's another set of headers called baggage, and baggage is for arbitrary context propagation. Literally, baggage headers can carry arbitrary key value pairs. The entire point of baggage is just to propagate context from service to service. So a good example of a piece of baggage you might like is a project ID. Perhaps early on in the transaction, you gain access to a project ID, and while later services in the transaction may not directly have access to that project ID, you may still want to index some of their operations or metrics by project ID, in which case you can throw that project ID into baggage and then pull it out of baggage later and attach it to your operations and metrics. And that is the power of OpenTelemetry. So we're getting close to the end. Let's do a recap. 
If you want to get started with OpenTelemetry, the first thing to do is audit your system and cross-check whether the languages you're using are ready to go in OpenTelemetry. As I mentioned before, the four most production-ready languages are Go, Python, Java, and JavaScript. Erlang is also getting ready to go. There's a whole bunch of other languages rating in the rings, but it's best to go uh, actually say hi to the implementation working group or otherwise kick the tires before rolling this stuff out into production because it really is still in beta. If you are interested in Go, Java, JavaScript, or Python, check out opentelemetry.lightstep.com. That's where I'm putting together all of the guides, getting started material, helper functions, bootstrappers, everything to get started quick with OpenTelemetry that isn't currently baked into core, but I would kind of like to see in core, is currently going on opentelemetry.lightstep.com. That's just sort of where I'm hacking and trying to push the edges of understanding how OpenTelemetry works today and how it should work tomorrow. So there'll be a lot of great content getting added there soon. Uh, if you want to know when new content's getting posted, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm Ted Suo. Otherwise, come check out OpenTelemetry. We have a lot of meetings. Uh, every day of the week, there's an OpenTelemetry meeting. You can find them all on our calendar. Uh, check out our Gitter if you want to just come in and chat and say hi. We're on Gitter all the time. And otherwise, please kick the tires. Give it a shot. Give us feedback. We hope you get involved. Thank you. Yellow, yellow. My name is Ted Young. You may remember this shirt from the video you just watched. Um, cool. So this is my first time on Hopin. Uh, it's not entirely clear to me whether people uh, can use voice. Uh, it looks like people can only use uh, chat uh, for feedback. Hi, David. Good to see you. Um, so first of all, uh, any questions about open telemetry in general? There's no dumb questions. Uh, it can be super basic questions. It could be super uh, specific or techno questions. I'm happy to answer any open telemetry related questions at this time. And if we don't have a lot of questions, I actually have questions. Uh, I'm trying out a new presentation style. This is actually my first time trying to put it together. It's definitely a bit of a rough draft, but I'm curious uh, how it went over. There's aspects of that presentation that you like, things that you didn't like, or anything that was confusing. So either here or DM me, I'd love to get feedback. Ah. So Jonathan uh, Molina asks, the Java library I spoke about, is that specific for the LightStep service or can it be used as something like Jaeger or Stackdriver? Uh, it can actually be used with Jaeger or Stackdriver. So to explain uh, what the OpenTelemetry launchers are, they're just an OpenTelemetry distro. In other words, if you use OpenTelemetry today, um, the setup code in particular, um, it's, it's got a fair amount of boilerplate. It hasn't really been packaged up into something that makes it look kind of nice. Um, so all the launchers are, are just a sort of prepackaged version of OpenTelemetry. Uh, in particular, there were some settings we needed to touch, like gRPC headers and stuff. So it was just a little ugly to set up without wrapping it up. So that's what the launchers are. You can uh, crack open OpenTelemetry and add any configurations that you want. So there's no reason you can't use the launchers with uh, Zipkin or Jaeger or any other system. And uh, if there is a feature that you think they're missing, uh, we'd love to get pull requests. And eventually, I hope to get something like the launchers baked back into OpenTelemetry. So have a look at those APIs and let me know what you think. Cool. So David mentions uh, that there used to be some competing standards on open tracing. Can you help clarify the difference between open telemetry tracing and competing standards? Okay, so when we talk standards, there's a couple of different pieces people are talking about. So one piece is context propagation. 
So like we were talking about in the video, there is a protocol for sending context from one system to the next as metadata on a network call. And for HTTP, you're doing that as HTTP headers. Now, there are several headers out there in the wild. The most popular is probably the Zipkin B3 headers. So those are the ones when it comes to interoperation today, uh, the Zipkin headers are probably the most popular. Of course, every single tracing system has their own custom headers. So it's sort of a bespoke landscape. That's where this W3C project uh, originated from so that we could have an official standard within the HTTP spec rather than a sort of you know, de facto standard. Besides those HTTP headers, the other place where maybe there's competing standards, there's certainly competing implementations of distributed tracing. Um, I think that's totally fine. Uh, two projects that were maybe a little too similar were open tracing and open census. That was basically everyone in the distributed tracing community who really wanted to work on a particular project. Uh, in a particular way, which was standardizing the language we're using to describe systems. And since we had these two projects that were nearly the same, both trying to create a standard, it was starting to turn into that XKCD comic where you end up just creating 17 standards. And so we ended up uh, merging those two projects. So that's actually where open telemetry comes from. It's sort of the version 2.0 of open tracing and open census. And uh, David asks whether open telemetry supports open tracing. That's correct. Open telemetry is 100% backwards compatible with open tracing. We really care a lot about backwards compatibility, not just between open telemetry and open tracing, but also with any future version of the open telemetry APIs. Part of the reason the APIs are separated from the SDK is to limit the surface area there so we understand specifically what backwards compatibility looks like for instrumentation code. It's really a big priority for the project. Yeah, no problem, David. Really wish they would let other people speak. It's kind of weird. Well, anyways, I suppose I'm gonna hang out here for another seven minutes or until they kick me out. So if you have any further questions, uh, please add them to the chat. Yeah, out of curiosity, is there anyone in the room who's currently using open telemetry or who's tried it? Ah, okay, David's got a good question. How does this all tie in with log monitoring, analytics, APM, et cetera? Is open telemetry sort of the future consolidation of all of these older disciplines, capabilities into a single pane of glass? Sort of. Uh, it really is about having the right context and the right indices. That's, to my mind, the primary difference between open telemetry and pre existing logs and APM solutions. Uh, obviously, all of the data within open telemetry is structured, so it's better than unstructured logs, but compared to say a structured logging system, the distributed tracing and open telemetry is not really any different, except you have all of these amazing indices, right? You have a transaction ID, and without some form of context propagation, there's really no way to get a full transaction ID. Um, you can get request IDs that will cover from one hop to another, but if your system really starts to sprawl, you find you end up having to kludge together like a set of IDs just to kind of see what your uh, transaction looks like. So having access to those extra indices is really what pulls distributed tracing ahead of run-of-the-mill structured logging, in my opinion. And likewise for metrics, the Open Telemetry Metrics API, I think is actually really interesting. I think it's a step above what we've seen in the past. It's definitely scratching some itches, but the key thing is that you can actually index your metrics uh, with a set of correlations that are much more interesting than you might be able to do in other systems where you didn't have context propagation. Um, 
or access to these different contexts. So that's, that's the main difference. So for example, an APM system without distributed tracing can give you a lot of information about one service and what that service is doing, but it becomes hard to uh, piece together a complete picture of your system once your transactions start to involve two, three, four services. So David asks, so is it the glue that allows all these uh, sides of the prism on observing the operation of services to have better insights? Yes, yes, exactly. It's really about improving data quality. Um, that's why open telemetry is really a telemetry system. There's no analysis portion of the system. The idea is just, can we cross index all of these different streams of data and produce a canonical data format that just has all of it in it. So you can consume it as a fire hose. And that's kind of novel in the past systems tended to be one of these pillars, right? So there wasn't much of a point of a combined data format that had logs and metrics and everything in it. But now that you're looking at systems growing to be more like actual full-on observability platforms where they can ingest a wide variety of data and find interesting correlations and insights across these different data streams, I think that's what open telemetry is enabling. And not just for existing, you know, vendors or whatever, I think it's going to make it really easy for people to experiment and build sort of one-off forms of analysis. Because one of the big barriers to entry is having to build this whole honking telemetry system and all of these integrations and instrumentations just so that you can experiment with a particular form of analysis. And not, not having to rebuild any of that is really one of the things that um, I think will accelerate uh, development of analysis in the ob observability space. So that's actually what I'm excited to see uh, in the next couple of years is all the crazy things people start building on top of open telemetry. Hope that answered your question. Cool beans. So we're at 1230, which I believe is the end of this session. So I'm going to log out of the video chat now. I think we're done. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it was super awesome. Uh, please DM me on Twitter if you want to continue the conversation. All right. Have a good one, y'all.